Directional control valves are used to start, stop, and change the direction of flow in a hydraulic circuit. Although they may be designed as rotary or poppet style, the spool type directional control is the most common. This design consists of a body with internal passages that are connected or sealed by a sliding spool along the land of the valve. Directional spool valves are sealed along the clearance between the moving spool land and the housing. The degree of sealing depends on the clearance, the viscosity of the fluid, and the pressure. Because of this slight leakage, spool-type directional valves can not alone hydraulically lock the actuator. Directional control valves are primarily designated by their number of possible positions, port connections or ways, and how they are actuated or energized. For example, the number of porting connections are designated as ways or possible flow paths. A four-way valve would have four ports, P, T, A, and B. A three-position valve is indicated by three connected boxes. There are many ways of actuating or shifting the valve. They are push button, hand lever, foot pedal, mechanical, hydraulic pilot, air pilot, solenoid, and spring. Directional control valves may also be designated as normally open or normally closed. These designations would accompany two position valves such as the following. Spring offset, solenoid operated, two-way valve, normally open. Spring offset, solenoid operated, three-way valve, normally closed. Spring offset, solenoid operated, three-way valve, normally open. Arise most hydraulic circuits into two basic types open center or closed center. The directional control valve actually designates the type of circuit. Open center circuits are defined as circuits which route pump flow back to the reservoir through the directional control valve during neutral or dwell time. This type of circuit typically uses a fixed volume pump such as a gear pump. If flow were to be blocked in neutral or Monoblock valves generally include one to four spools to control circuit functions and, compared to sectional valves, are often limited in available options. These valves are called monoblock because one metal casting is machined to house the valve spools. Because of this type of construction, they are generally less expensive to manufacture. A single speed monoblock is shown here. Many spool configurations are available, including two, three, and four position valves with three and four way spools. The center position flow configurations consist of tandem, open, closed center, and float spools. While spring spool centering is most common, it is possible to have one or more spool positioning detents as options. Different types of valve actuators can be used. More than one type can be used on an assembly. The different types include hand lever, shown here, cam roller, remote cable, and palm button. Monoblock valves can incorporate many options incorporated in the main housings, making them more compact and less likely to leak. Options include a system relief valve, load, and anti-cavitation valves, a closed centered plug, and power beyond capabilities. This is a single spool monoblock valve. However, a typical assembly could include one to four spools to control circuit functions. Many spool configurations are available. The example shown has a three-position, four-way, tandem center spool. Pump flow passes through the inlet port of the valve and is made available to the center portion of the spool, and it also flows through the valve to the outlet port and to the reservoir. Shifting the manual lever to the left will block the pump flow from passing through the tank port while opening the center section of the spool to allow flow to pass through to one of the work ports to the circuit actuator. Fluid returning from the actuator will then flow in through the other work port passage and out through the tank port back to the reservoir. Shifting the manual lever to the right will reverse the pump flow out through the opposite work port to the circuit actuator, reversing the actuator's direction. Fluid returning from the actuator will then flow in through the other workboard passage and out through the tank port back to the reservoir. 
partial shifting of the valve spool will regulate the amount of pump fluid that will flow through the work ports, regulating the speed of the actuator. Excess pump fluid passes through the valve and out the tank port back to the reservoir. Spring centering of the spool, shown here, is one of the most commonly used. This option uses a single spring to return the spool to the center position as the operator releases the lever after being actuated to the right or left. A system relief valve, which is shown, is commonly installed in a monoblock valve to limit the maximum system pressure. The greatest resistive load in any of the individual valve circuits determines the setting of this relief valve. As the pump flow passing through the valve meets resistance greater than the setting of the relief valve, the relief valve opens, allowing pump flow to pass through the valve at high pressure and through the tank port back to the reservoir. Many monoblock valves are field convertible to make the valve close centered. This configuration allows fluid to be available to each of the spools in the valve block as required by the actuation of the spool. Flow not used in one circuit is available to another circuit. However, all of the pump flow is blocked in the pressure passage when all of the valve spools are in their center position. This option is most often used when a variable displacement pressure compensated pump is used. Another common option is the application of a power beyond sleeve, which is most often used with a fixed displacement pump. The installation of this sleeve allows pump flow to be available to all of the spools in the main valve block, yet it also permits unused fluid to pass through the center of the valve, making it available for use in another valve block or other function. This feature does not affect the function of an installed system relief valve. The return flow from any upstream work port cannot be used downstream and passes to the reservoir. A load check valve is commonly used to prevent fluid from backflowing from the work ports if the pump flow is not available while a spool is being actuated. Sectional valves are constructed so that each individual spool is housed separately. Each one is assembled with tie rods using end covers, which provide for the inlet and outlet porting to the sections. This type of construction allows for more advanced or complex machining on each section and end covers to provide for the options mentioned later. A single spool sectional valve is shown here. Many spool configurations are available including two, three, and four position valves with three and four-way spools. The center position flow configurations consist of tandem, open, closed center, and float spools. While spring spool centering is most common, one, two, three, and four spool positioning detents are possible. Different types of valve actuators can be used. More than one type of valve actuator can be used on an assembly, including hand levers, shown here cam rollers, remote cables, and palm buttons. Electric on-off and electric proportional actuators are also available. Sectional valves can incorporate many options in the main housing, making them more compact and less likely to leak. Options include a system relief valve, load and anti-cavitation check valves, closed center plugs, and power beyond capabilities. A two-spool valve is shown, although sectional valves generally include several spools to control circuit functions. The inlet of a section valve accommodates the inlet port to the valve, is generally machined with one of the two mounting surfaces, 
and is commonly used for a system relief valve. The surface opposite the inlet is machined to assemble next to one of the valve surfaces. The system relief valve is used to limit the maximum system. The greatest resistive load realized in any of the individual valve circuits determines the setting of this relief valve. As the pump flow passing through the valve meets with resistance greater than the setting of the relief valve, the relief valve opens, allowing pump flow to pass through it at high pressure and pass through the tank port back to the reservoir. A control valve section is available with many spool configurations. A three-position tandem center spool is shown in this example. Pump flow passes through the inlet port of the valve and is made available to the center portion of the spool. It then flows through the valve to the outlet port and to the reservoir. Shifting the manual lever to the left will block the pump flow from passing through to the tank port, while opening the center section of the spool to allow the flow to pass through one of the work ports to the circuit actuator. Fluid returning from the actuator flows in through the other work port passage and out through the tank port back to the reservoir. Shifting the manual lever to the right will reverse the pump flow out through the opposite work port to the circuit actuator, reversing its direction, returning in through the other work port and passing through the tank port to the reservoir. Partial shifting of the valve spool will regulate the amount of pump fluid that will flow through the work ports regulating the speed of the actuator. Excess pump fluid passes through this valve to the next actuated valve section where it can be used to operate another circuit actuator or flow out through the tank port back to the reservoir. Spring centering of the spool is one of the most commonly used options which is shown here. This option uses a single spring to return the spool to the center position when the operator releases the lever after being actuated to the right or left. The outlet of a section valve accommodates the outlet port to the valve, is generally machined with one of the two valve mounting surfaces. Sectional valves are field convertible to make the valve close centered. This configuration allows fluid to be available to each of the spools in the valve block as required by the actuation of the spool. Flow not used in one circuit is available to another circuit. However, all of the pump flow is blocked in the pressure passage when all of the valve spools are in their center position. This option is most often used when a variable displacement pressure compensated pump is used. Another common option is the application of a power beyond sleeve, which is most often used with a fixed displacement pump. The installation of this sleeve allows pump flow to be available to all of the spools in the main valve block, yet it also permits unused fluid to pass through the center of the valve, making the valve available for use in another valve block or other function. This feature does not affect the function of an installed system relief valve. The return flow from any upstream work port is not able to be used downstream and passes to the reservoir. Some sectional control valves are machined for the use of anti-cavitation check and circuit relief valves. These valves are generally a combination of both functions and eliminate cavitation in either of the work ports if an overrunning load occurs in the circuit. The circuit relief valve can be adjusted to eliminate overpressurization in either of the work ports.
The inlet section accommodates the inlet or pressure port to the sectional valve and routes the fluid to the downstream sections of the valve. The inlet is machined to accommodate one of the two mounting surfaces and the surface opposite the inlet is machined to be assembled next to one of the control valve surfaces. It is commonly used for a system relief valve and ports the fluid through the relief and into the tank passage of the valve. A system relief valve can be installed in the inlet section to limit the maximum system pressure. The greatest resistive load realized in any of the individual valve circuits would determine the setting of this relief valve. As the pump flow passing through the valve assembly meets with resistance greater than the setting of the relief valve, the relief valve opens, allowing pump flow to pass through it at high pressure and pass through the tank passage and back to the reservoir. The control valve section changes the direction of the flow to individual circuits of the hydraulic system. Many spool configurations are available. A three-position tandem center spool is shown in this example. Fluid is routed from the pressure port to one of the work ports and the returning fluid enters in through the other port and into the tank passage. This valve section also includes the lever actuator to shift the spool. However, other types are available. The spring centering assembly, which is also shown on this valve, returns the spool to its center position when the lever is released. Other options are also available. Be limited to a desired setting in an individual circuit of a hydraulic system. This valve is often combined with an anti-cavitation check valve. The relief valve is often direct acting when used in lower flow circuits and pilot operated in higher flow circuits. When the adjusted spring force is overcome by the circuit pressure acting on the valve, it opens and allows the high pressure to pass to the tank passage of the valve assembly. The anti-cavitation check valve is often assembled in the control valve section and is generally combined with a circuit relief valve. The anti-cavitation check valve allows fluid from the tank passage of the valve assembly to be drawn into an individual circuit, if necessary, to keep a high displacement actuator from cavitating or drawing a vacuum. This condition could present itself when the lift arms on a front-end loader are lowered rapidly. A direct-acting directional control valve may be either manual or solenoid actuated. Direct-acting indicates that some method of force is applied directly to the spool causing the spool to shift. In our illustration, energizing the solenoid or coil creates an electromagnetic force which wants to pull the armature into the magnetic field. As this occurs, the connected push pin moves the spool in the same direction while compressing the return spring. As the spool valve shifts, port P opens to port A and port B opens to port T or tank. This allows the cylinder to extend. When the coil is de-energized, the return springs move the spool back to its center position. Watch the whole animation uninterrupted 